Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside Quarantine Editions of the Episodes. Uh, joining us this week from Instagram, we have Brew Review Phil. Hey, Carp. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks uh, for watching everybody out there. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to letting us speak with you today. Uh, this was a natural progression of the show. Unfortunately, COVID sped that up, but uh, I get to meet awesome people like yourselves, fellow Canadians who are all about the craft beer industry. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, what we usually do on every show is we share a virtual beer. So let the audience know what you're drinking. I'm drinking, uh, it's called Dirty Birdie. It's from one of my favorite spots in the entire province. It's the Niagara College Teaching Brewery where the students brew their own beers. They teach them how to brew beers and then they just have a lot of one-offs like these guys. Um, it's an IPA, I was told, and it definitely tastes like one. They don't make many of these, so I was happy to get this one. Awesome. I've got from Rorschach, our friends at Rorschach, uh, Reverie. It's yep, a I got one of those my Dreamsicle Double IPA. Uh, oh, so I as we do here. virtually... What we try to do virtually is a toast. So a toast. Let's see if I can get this today. Ah, nope. Hold on. Let me let me do it. Let me do it too. Ah. Ah, too, too much beer. All right. Let's uh <laughs> let's enjoy some beer here. Let's enjoy. Ooh, tasty. Yeah. Mm. That's really oh. good. Yeah, I'm very jealous of you. Rorschach is something else, and I see you're you're in the that kind of region of Ontario, so. I work close to there too, so I, I don't take advantage of that nearly enough, but uh, I should. <laughs> yeah, my, my paychecks would be gone with them very quickly. Awesome. Uh, so what got you beer Instagram and what, what made you decide to take your, your crap beer passion and put it online for everybody to see? Funny enough, I just, I just couldn't sleep one night. It was would have been two Augusts ago. I, um, I was just, I don't know, one of those nights you wake up at like 2 a.m. and you're like, oh, I still, you know, four hours of sleep but I was just lying and lying there and I was thinking about I was thinking about beer <laughs> thinking about beer and I was thinking at the time um I, I had just a personal account and I was starting to drink more and more beer and I was posting pictures but nobody in my personal account cared you know and none, none, none of my friends that I already have really drink craft beer unfortunately so I was like ah, I was like there's some cool accounts that I follow that just post about beer what if I just do that you know they, they don't post about funny enough uh, teaching college here was one of the first ones I thought like nobody ever posts about them I just wanted to start an account and you know I'll, I'll post pictures of them I'll post pictures of, of whatever else is in my fridge so woke up the next day started the account um, took a picture of my fridge and I was just like my first picture if you ever were to scroll way the hell back is literally a picture of my fridge and I just put like, my caption was something like this will be a fun project <laughs> And I really thought, I really thought this would last a few months. I thought, oh, I'm not going to have a lot of content. Nobody's going to really, eh. But uh, next thing I knew, uh, I kept posting every day. I, I feel like, I feel like I'm still here today because I post every day. But at the time I was thinking like, eh, you know, just to get some of these out there. I just want to get this um, desire to show what I'm drinking out there. Maybe I'll get it out of my system and be done in a month. But here I am still almost uh, two and a half years later. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's a fantastic outlet for people's creativity, and I see like there is creativity in your posts. You combine retro video games, class, class or classical, classic music, um, you know, friends and family, and and other Instagrammers. So you see the passion in the photos, and even the write ups. There's like just your most recent one speaking about Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger. Like I'm at that age range where I actually played Chrono Trigger on the Super NES, so oh, it's man. like that brings back so much nostalgia and I'm like, Oh my God, this is great. And even like the home alone photo, grabbing the screen cap from with the shoot up part. It's like, I love that stuff. So it's uh, you're a great follow and, and you have obviously grown your, your user base pretty well for over two years. You know, you're almost at 1700, which is really, really good. So <clears throat> I never, I never thought that would happen. I really, I always say often I'm talking to friends and I'm just like, you know, I said to myself in the beginning, if just like a hundred people follow me and like 10 people like it, you know, at least I know those 10 people genuinely like the picture, you know, I don't think I'd still be doing it now. If I was just at a hundred followers, I don't think I'd have the, I think the passion would have just gone. I would have been like, eh, but uh, like, that's why like all the followers, all the friends I've made, they've really kept me going. Yeah, no, it's an awesome community to be part of personally, the whole, you know, let's go out there and let's have, well, when we can again, let's go drink some beers together and chat about it and, it's free promotion for the breweries when you think about it, just people talking about their beers online. So it's, it's amazing. Uh, where did you kind of, what made you decide brew review Phil and not just, you know, Phil drinks or 
craft fill, anything like that. I, I, for, for, I want to add in, I hate my username. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. But the, the reason, again, I didn't think I'd be, I compare it to, I don't know, I don't know what kind of music I listen to or, or people watching, but Dave Grohl has often said, if he knew that the Foo Fighters would be as big as they are now, he would have never called them the Foo Fighters. I'm not, compa- I'm not comparing <laughs> at all my page to Foo Fighters or myself to Dave Grohl, but it is the same idea where I was just, I, I was like, what do I call myself? And what the reason behind the, the actual reason behind the name is, um, so I used to have, I still have, I just don't write on anymore. I have a, a website where I review albums, started it as a school project and um it was called Rock Review Phil. That I actually, I actually like that name, Rock Review Phil. And I was like, eh, I have that already. And well, why not just call it? At first, I was Beer Review Phil for about a month. And I was like, that sounds even more lame. So I just changed it to Brew Review Phil. And that's the actual story of why I named myself that. And now it's just like, it's just, I'm too far in to change it. <laughs> yeah, because well, you're risking possibly losing your followers you already have. And just, yeah. I changed it for a day. I just, I don't mean to cut you off. I changed it for a day. And I was like, all these people that tag me and stuff, will they still be able to find me? And I, I noticed after I, ch- I can't remember what I, I tested a name. It was never going to stick, but I just want to see what would happen. And I saw all of my tags, you know, you could see it, like who, who tagged you in posts on mm-hmm. Instagram. They were all gone yeah. because it wasn't that name that they tagged. I was like, okay, that's just going to, this is going to cause so much trouble. I'm just going to keep it. Yeah, no, for sure. It's a little easier to do. Obviously, uh, you know, I've always been known as carp and, I can't remember. I'm a pro wrestling fan. So Killer Kowalski, I'm from, you know, Montreal. So that's, you know, classic. So it just, it kind of flowed. And then somebody said, Hey, what about Carpe Diem? I'm like, Oh, there it is. That's, that's what it is now. Killer Carpe Diem. So it can and never change. That's an awesome. So, that's an awesome. Yeah. Uh, do you remember how you discovered craft beer? I'm assuming you started like most of us with your macros drinking with friends in backyards and things like that. It's just, I, um, I started, oh. I, I didn't actually, I don't think I drank a single beer until I was 23. I, uh, back in high school, I was just like that. I saw how the people were in high school. I just, I wasn't part of that crowd. And I just thought that they were not as cool as they thought they were. I don't know. I don't want to be little people. That's just my own opinion from when I was in high school. And I was, I was like, I don't want to be like that. So I was just staying away from it. And it's, I, I feel like I want to kick myself for saying that, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, then I was 23, uh, I was 23. And then I was at uh, a cousin's cottage just for to quickly say hi. And they were like, you know, you want a beer? And I was just like, I was actually just dying of thirst at the time. So I was like, sure. Um, I, I like, I didn't want to ask for a water. So I said, give me a beer. I downed it quickly. Cause I was that thirsty. And uh, I was like, yeah, it wasn't the worst thing. I, I it, it wasn't awkward. It, it was a nice social thing, drinking, talking with them, drinking a beer. So I always started drinking beer, but craft beer about a year after that, um over the year i just I, I would go in the lcbo and i wouldn't pay attention if it was ontario craft or craft or anything i was just like this beer looks cool let me let me pick it up you know but it was um and i'm sure some of them were craft beers i just don't remember excuse me it's a beer <laughs> um i um i don't remember if like specifically what they were but the summer after that first beer so i was 24 by this point i went to the inaugural Toronto Craft Beer Festival just because you know I was, I was like let's check it out and um I didn't even know what the concept of craft <clears throat> what craft beer was at the time I didn't know craft beer was a thing mm-hmm. so I was like let's find out what this word means you know and um it was so that was like I said it was the inaugural one it was pretty small it was just this little thing in a parking lot by Fairview Mall which it's since grown a lot it's at the same spot I don't know if you know what TFOB is Toronto Festival of Beer um it's in the same spot as that now which is a pretty big spot but at the time it was just little thing and um i just remember, i remember specifically i remember trying barnstormer um double trouble <sighs> amsterdam was there and i remember ironwood cider because i do like cider as well um and i was just like okay and then i i learned then that you know craft beer means like it's made locally in small batches and stuff like that so that's how i got on it and then by that fall um so we're talking about 2015 here um I was just like you know I don't want to drink the big stuff anymore I just want this craft beer like I found myself when I go to LCBO and such I'm only getting I'm only looking in the section now I don't want the cores and the all that stuff anymore you know that's so that's how that happened like I said I I loved some of the combination of video games music films etc 
what gave you that idea to do that instead of just like taking a picture of the beer and then writing about it? I can't, you know what I was, I'm trying to remember the progression of that. I don't remember the progression because it used to just be like a little picture of a beer here or fun, especially if I were, were, to, were to go out, it's always nicer having a picture of a beer out, which obviously you can't do right now, mm -hmm. but um, like um, to do like what you're, you're referring to, like the vinyl, you're referring to the video game post that I made today about Final Fantasy and stuff that just came with inspiration from my friends, I would say, because my favorite, my favorite thing to do is music vinyl like that like when i see a beer my first thought is what album can i pair this with there's a few people on in, on uh instagram who i follow that pair beer with records and i like the way it looks so i was like let me try it and i, I just do it for fun it's 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 a fun way to pair the beer and not just have it like you said just sitting there yeah um and and that, like last year, like my, my most liked picture ever, and I'm amazed at this, is um, is a Rush album that I paired with a beer. And um, I realized, you know, people don't hate seeing this. But then, you know, I thought to myself, I like I like pairing with movies as well, because I love like I just they're my passions. Mm -hmm. I, I've always wanted to like start a uh, Instagram account of the movies that I like or the video games that I play, the retro video games. But I was like. Then I got to start from the ground again. And I was nervous enough doing that with beer. So let me just, I already have this here with, you know, like you said, almost 1700 followers. Let me just use this and kind of just subliminally talk about these games and movies and stuff that are like, while hypnotizing them with these pictures of beer, you know? Um, but I never really thought of the progression of it. I definitely just took inspiration from, uh, from my friends on, on Instagram. Oh, that's awesome. Like you could even you could even see it where you know you're either taking the the name of the beer and, and associating it with a very specific album or even just the color scheme kind of going together as well. So and I find I just I find that fun. Like it's become a, a fun activity. Like I did my um I don't know if people really paid attention, but I did a top ten Beatles songs uh like every Saturday for I, I I'm I think I'm gonna start doing like top ten saturdays every now and then just because i hate posting on saturdays and it gives me more reason to do so and like i found it fun because i have my own rankings of every beatles songs i'm a huge beatles fan and i thought okay i know my top 10 let me try to think of beers and i actually went usually i i look for beers and i think you know maybe this will go with this album this time i specifically looked around ontario for what beer could go with this song and if i can't pick the song maybe the album would work you know and that was that was fun and that's it's just becoming a, a fun activity yeah you know, like in that like to purposely find things to pair with as opposed to just seeing it and thinking i could go i, I could do that you know I, I hope that makes sense <laughs> yeah, no it makes complete sense and, and like like we mentioned earlier it, it's a good creative outlet for yourself from the, from the look of it yeah. so it's uh you gotta you gotta get some stuff out sometimes be everybody's creative in their own way you know that this show just literally started as me and the guys hanging out uh just talking crap about each other and drinking beer and then it evolved to to this where i'm talking with fellow beer lovers across canada so far um eventually we'll be venturing to the u.s when it's you know safe to travel again so uh but that's from there and and it's great and seeing everybody's passion online i love it so that's that's why i'm i'm like i said I'm, i was going to talk to everybody on instagram at some point anyways but now it's it's just it you know uh the world decided otherwise that hey guess what you're doing it now instead of a year from now so it's uh, it's awesome uh have you ever worked with any breweries for your for instagram purposes or you just kind of just go never, never instagram purposes um like we did this thing um a bunch of my friends that i met through instagram and i would go to breweries and like collab with them just be there while they brewed a beer some and, and um we call them brew days. We haven't done what we, we haven't done one since the pandemic. We, we actually come to think of it. And I, I, I was going to say it's been a year, but there's a reason it's been a year. Um, the, they were fun though. I mean, like I said, they weren't, they weren't for Instagram, but they were because of Instagram, if you will. Like I was, the reason I was there is because of these friends that I made through Instagram and they were a lot of fun. You know, I, I learned, I'm not, um, I think I think you've mentioned in past videos you're a home brewer. I feel I feel like you no, I I want to. It's just uh, space and uh, you kind of have to be anal retentive about it. The whole cleaning thing, and I know I would just mm. I would forget to clean something and all that time wasted. So it's uh, yes. that I would think, just I think it was, 
Sorry. Yeah, that, that would just kill me mentally that time. Like the first time I screw up, it, I'd be done. So it's the cleaning thing. Cause I saw, I, I was watching the Crystal Land of the Capital video and you, you mentioned the cleaning thing. And that's what I was thinking of when I yeah. said that. But the, re the reason I brought that up is because like all these, I've done, oh, eight of the brew days. I went to uh, quite a few places with these friends and I still, I wouldn't be able to know what to do. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's really just hanging out. We learn stuff like uh, depends on the brewery. Like the first one I was a part of was this place called Shakespeare Brewing Company in a little town called Shakespeare, Ontario, which is right outside Stratford. Um, and like he was very descriptive. He said exactly what he was doing. Like he was letting us know every bit of the process. And we did a few things like we threw in some hops and stuff. But then there's other ones where they don't really tell us anything. They're just kind of like, OK, you're here. I'm doing this. Just throw this in. Do this. Like it, it really depends on the brewery. But um, I, I didn't, I haven't picked up enough to know what to do myself. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if you put, put everything in front of me, I'll be like, somebody <laughs> help me. But uh, no, but they were fun. They were fun. It was always cool to um, know I had a small part in something, especially when they would release the beers. Like they would, when they would sell the beers, like they're like most, most of these places were making beers that they intended to sell to the public. And a lot of these places credited us, you know, we had our own little name and uh, they would say by these people. And, uh, but then some of them were just like, no, this is just a little thing. Like we're going to make a little small batch and you, we're going to have it on tap and you guys just come here and have it in a glass and then leave. Those, those places I'm always kind of like, really, we're taking all this time to do just that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in terms of collabs, if you will, that's my experience. I really just, I just looked at it as hanging out with friends and I, and I miss these friends. I've made, I've made some great friends over Instagram. Uh, so you don't hope her yet. Uh, do you think maybe there's a future in that or you're kind of like me I, where it's like, it's too much extra work? No, you know what? It's not the work. Um, I don't know. I'm so open to it, but I'm also pessimistic as to if I'll ever actually do it, but I'm so open, you know, I'm not going to say, Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't have an actual reason other than just like thinking it's mostly time, quite frankly, you know, I, I feel like that if, if I were to say a reason why I'm not sure if, and when it's time, it's the, it's, you know, I, I, I work early mornings and I come home wiped out. Uh, and on the weekends, I just want to leave the house, you know, especially right now when we can't leave the house. I just like to try to find a reason to, but like legally, of course, nothing like against the, the rules of, of, of the lockdown, if you will. But um, that's that. That's why. So I'm, I'm going to say I'm open to one day actually home brewing, but I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. No, that's awesome. Uh, so from the sound of it, you're in the GTA, you're close to the GTA. York, York region. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's say myself, well, I've been to Toronto like a dozen times, but uh, let's say for myself or, or I have some friends who are visiting Toronto, I go, Hey, check out brew review, Phil. Uh, what are some highly suggested, let's say three to five places where you have to go to these breweries. In the York region, not many. <laughs> um, I might, I might end up talking about some Toronto breweries in this case, cause it's not that far. I would definitely mention I'm, I'm wearing the shirt market brewing is where I'd spend every Tuesday um, when I can. Um, and if it's right now, I'm just with them on zoom every Tuesday because they do trivia, but I, I, that's where my main group hangs out. Um, they uh, Josh, their head brewer and Lee is a, his, I don't know, his, his number two guy. They're really good at brewing beers. Like the beer, actually you mentioned it, the home alone picture yeah. that i posted with uh, that's that was the market beer and that was one of their best yet because um actually funny enough it tasted a lot like one of the collab beers that i did that i was talking about earlier um anyway so they're really good at they're not afraid to experiment but they have their limits um but that's one place i would recommend recently i finally visited so there's a brewery called kensington brewery they're in the kensington market but they open a second location right by my house. And uh, I finally went to that location. I love the brewery. I, the, I absolutely have always loved it. I might call them one of my top five Toronto breweries. Um, so I don't know why it took me so long to go to this new location. Uh, so technically, even though I'm not near Kensington Market, I'm close to Kensington Brewing. And I definitely recommend them. Um, 
they got amazing stuff. In fact, they have the only hard seltzers that I really like. I don't like I don't like hard the, the hard seltzer vape uh, craze that's going on. Um, I've tried so many different places and I don't like them, but I just got a bunch from them and I'm like, you know what? They're pretty good. Um, but of course, their their beer is good too. Their uh, their hazy IPA is making rounds on Instagram right now. Actually, um, geez, what else is close? So this is where I'm going to start start talking about Toronto breweries now because <laughs> yeah. like like it, it, often I find myself just wanting to go to Black Lab. They're my favorite Toronto brewery. Um, so I, I typically think about them. I think about Salter Street, which is another one of my top five favorite Toronto breweries. Um, if I were to go a little north, um, my favorite brewery in the entire province is Flying Monkeys, so I would definitely go there as well. Um, I think I named six. Sorry, I went a little no, much there. T- don't worry about it. Uh, the more the merrier and the more people get to find out. Yeah, we interviewed Flying Monkeys. Uh, they're awesome people. Uh, I really want to get back. To, you know, I, I'd never been to Barry before until this year. As a, as a Montrealer, you know, oh, something's happening in Toronto, and that's that's it. That's where we go. <laughs> or oh, Ottawa. Ottawa's did you go right to there. the other Barry? Did you go to the other Barry breweries while you were there? Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have time. Uh, it was we interviewed the Flying Monkeys. Uh, the owners were super nice enough to offer us a free lunch, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I have to get back to Montreal to work tomorrow. So oh, shit, that's a that's, drive. Too. That's a bit of a drive, uh, especially after From I've had Bayer. a few tasters and and. I'm full of food. And that's that's a seven hour drive that I'm just like, yep, yeah, let's uh, let's do this. So, plus being the the only driver, uh, well, out of it's we're a two man crew with this show, uh, and I'm I'm the car owner, so it's it's my responsibility to drive. So you know, it, another thing that sucks is you pass so many good breweries on the way on the four hundred one. You're passing Oshawa, Whitby. You're passing Five Paddles. You're passing. There's some good breweries between here and Montreal. That uh, you probably couldn't stop at. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, so this is uh, my next question. I usually ask um, beercation. So when it's safe to travel again, when it's safe, everything's open again. A personal beercation. I want to get to Toronto, not set up any interviews, and just Uber everywhere and drink until I pretty much can't stand anymore at some point. So if if I mean that, that's your like, if I could recommend too, it's a little further. But if you have the time to go a little bit further into Ontario, my favorite region in the entire province is Niagara. Mm-hmm. Like everything in Niagara, I've been to every single one of those breweries and every one of them has a couple of things about them that I will always have me going back to them. So if you get a, if you get a second beercation where you don't have to, you, you know, I, I, oh man, I recommend that. I uh, recommend going there. I know Sil- uh, Silversmith, I want to say. Silversmith. Silver- Yep. Silversmith. So uh, a friend went out to Niagara while the numbers were low in Ontario, well, in Canada in general. Uh, he went out there and he said he went to Silversmith. And I love the concept. I've always liked this, how they turned a former religious building into a brewery. Uh, mm-hmm. So that that was always my thing. I've always said where if I had the money to start my own brewery and I could buy like an old church, that's that's what I'm doing. And that's what these guys are. So they actually have Niagara has two uh, church breweries because there's also uh, Brimstone. It's a little more south, but Brimstone also is in, um, I th- I'm pretty sure it's a church. It looks like one, that's for sure. So but, there's there's two for you to check out. Yeah. <laughs> Plus Brimstone's an awesome metal name, so. Yes, it is. <laughs> there's, and their stuff, there's stuff, honestly, their, their uh, can art typically looks like it's pretty, like, it's like half religious and half not, like, um, like their their main uh, what's their what's their IPA their their main IPA their flagship IPA which the name is escaping me but the can art is like the hands praying and if there's a rosary on it but their hands are like really tattooed and they look really badass like like that's and and one of my favorite beers Enlightenment is like um like a, a church like like a, a boy dressed like he's going to church but he's got like devil feet and a devil tail like I think that's a really cool uh, they got a really cool thing going there oh I'll have to. Even if I just go out there for interviews for the show and it's, you know, safe to hang out at breweries again, even if it's just socially distanced, uh, like I did in Toronto for, well, I did it for a weekend, but we got six, six weeks of episodes out of it, which was great. Hey, okay. um, so I gotta, I gotta get out to Niagara. I'm hoping the numbers drop when the schools close again, uh, but vaccine rollout's coming. So, uh, the, and I, I'm a believer in science. So as soon as they could jab me a couple of times with a needle, I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, for yourself, though, let's, um, you know, safe to, 
get in a cylindrical tube and fly again somewhere. Uh, Beercation, let's say one where money is very much like I have to budget. And then one where money is just like coming out of your pockets. No problem. What are a couple of beer cases? I'll, I'll do the money. The money coming out of my pockets is I feel like that's the shorter answer because I'm not, I've never been a big traveler. I've never desired traveling, especially out of the country. But my heritage, half my heritage is German. So I've always kind of wanted to go there to, well, I've always wanted to go there. But for beer, I don't know. Like I have um, relatives in Bavaria and they told me like Bavarian law is you're not allowed to base, you're basically not allowed to have anything that isn't. Um, a lager. They said you, you need sim- be simple ingredients. If you do anything else to the beer, it's actually illegal. And I'm just kind of like, that makes me not really want to drink beer when I'm in Germany. And that's what everybody wants to do. Um, so traveling the world aside, I mean, I wouldn't mind going to some, I don't know, like going out West, maybe even to the States. Cause I hear really good things about Seattle, um, Portland. Like I've, I've had people like take, road trips through like to California from like Vancouver mm-hmm. and they always show pictures of them stopping in like the middle-ish area I don't know the states all that well but I know it's somewhere in the middle there uh at the, the middle west and um the beers look so good but then even just west coast Canada two of my friends um the the friends you and I you and I before this interview were talking about the the Bernese Mountain Dog yeah their owner their owners um went out west and they looked like they had the best time they would send me videos of the breweries they were in and um, they were there for like a month and like so i mean if i could take a month i mean traveling out west is not a ton of money but if you stay for a month it kind of is especially because you're not making money so i'll I'll count that as especially because i work i work uh, i work the trade so if i'm not working i'm not making money um so if i were if i were to say money not an option i would just take a month off and go out west like they did money being an option it's funny that you asked this especially with you being in montreal because i had a dream a couple of weeks ago where i was doing one of these solo beer adventures that i love doing just just you know leaving the house typically when i do these i just wake up on a saturday morning like where am i gonna go today i don't have this planned out ahead of time and i had a dream that one of these days i went to montreal um and i've been thinking to myself you know what the one time in my adult life that i've been to montreal i went to brutopia which you mentioned earlier Mm -hmm. but that was that was just because that was like the summer that would have been right before the craft beer festival so i was drinking beer but i wasn't doing craft beer so i did not explore craft beer at all and i just want to do a redo of that and actually go to breweries and have their beer you know like i can make a good two little I don't know, take more than two days, but if I were to just, you know, if money was an option, I would just get a hotel room for the night, go for one day, get a bunch of beer, go the next day, maybe hit another brewery or two and then start hanging home. Like that would be, I've just, it's funny you ask that because I've been thinking about doing that lately. <laughs> well, I mean, if timelines fall in, it'd be a good Labor Day weekend to come on into Montreal. And uh, yeah, uh, when's the last time you were in Montreal? Five, six years ago uh, from the Saturday? 2014, 2015, I would say. And it was midsummer. It was whenever the, um, I don't know that the part, pardon me for not really knowing French, but there's a whole French name for it, but it was the, it was the Just for Last Festival, I think, that they have there. Am, am I oh, remembering right? It was some sort of comedy festival. Yeah, so we have, we have Just for Last, but we also have a French version called uh, Francofolie. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like what it was. Yeah, so um, we, I mean, we're fest, I don't know about Toronto, but we're very festival heavy in, in Montreal. It's uh, almost Toronto, every weekend yeah. there's a festival during the summer. In, so. in, during normal circumstances, Toronto is fairly festival heavy. There's always something going on somewhere, even if it's a small thing. So I, I, I would say um, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's just t- time and honestly, time and money. It's, you know, one of the better parts, I hate to say it, one of the better parts about the pandemic is I'm actually able to save money instead yeah. of going out every weekend and drinking beer with friends. So it's uh it's Which weird it's uh it sucks but um you know i personally i've never been to europe for beer i want to go to europe i hear amazing things about vancouver if uh you know if money wasn't an option i'd buy an rv and i would just drive so yeah i want if i if i can name one brewery that the, there's one can that they brought back to me from the west coast i think it's in uh bc it's called cold mountain and it was really good they, they it was um 
daydream IPA. I did one of my vinyl pairings with it, and it was oh, such a good beer. And it was an old can. For some reason, my friend my friend came back and he said, uh, Ryan said, like yeah. And it, it, I I asked I always ask for the old cans. I'm just like, why? You're paying the same amount of money. So he gave me an old can, and it tasted amazing. So I can only imagine what that thing tasted like fresh. Yeah, no, for sure. That's uh, that's amazing. And um, I'm sure you're the same way I am. We need beer from across Canada, across Canada. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you should. I, I know you guys are finally starting to get bottle uh, bottle shops in, in Toronto. I saw Bodega yeah. and Bev Bira, I want to say. Bev Bira, yeah. Bev Bira is close um, to me, actually. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're lucky enough in Quebec where we actually have uh, beer convenience stores. We've had them for a while now. So I'm lucky in that sense. Uh, but, you know, it's just Quebec beer. It's very. And we finally got collective arts here within the last year. That's it. So, And that's surprising because I find they're everywhere. Yeah. Even in the States, you find collective arts everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got this thing called the language law uh, where uh, French is very much a necessary part of your product. So it's uh, the way I see it is um, like our, our local liquor commission is called the SAQ and they finally got brew dog and they basically just put a sticker on it that says like low dolge uh vein you know things like that so it's uh it's That's part cool. of what's living here i love i love montreal uh, not so much the province but i love montreal so it's, it's very uh, it's it's a weird attitude to have is you love the city you're in but you hate where it's located it's it's a double-edged it's a double-edged, a yeah. double-edged sword if you will i think is the name that they say cloud uh, night cloud whatever yeah <laughs> yeah but like you mentioned just getting up on a saturday and traveling where i am thankfully it's like oh vermont's two hours away Doop. like yeah just take a two-hour road trip so uh you have you have what michigan not too far from you i uh, i think that's gonna be a, i've never tried driving there uh i'd have to get to windsor first and at mm. first I, i've never been to windsor and they got some good beer there yeah um but uh, I've never tried it, but I'm think I, I never tried, I never tried to drive, but I'm thinking it's more than two hours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it would what, be, it would be Buffalo. That yeah, would be the closest. I, I've never really asked this of anyone. What, what would a, be a realistic like day road trip, day beer trip for you? Like how many hours of, of driving there? You know, I'm pretty, I'm open to, it depends on this. It would take a little more, more planning, but I would drive for, three hours if okay. it would be early in the morning yeah i usually usually what i do is i sort of lied it wasn't so much a wake up in the morning but it, it's like the friday before like i'll start to think like what do i want to do tomorrow and then i'll see what time these places open like if i want to go to a place like the so far the furthest spontaneous trip i've ever taken i've taken further trips but for spontaneity was um to trenton which is right above prince edward county um i really wanted to go to wild card brewing i don't know if you know if you've heard of these places but um i just wanted to go there one day and so the night before i I said what time do they open and they open at 11 and i I prefer the earlier the better because um it means i could fit more things in for the day if the first brewery i want to go to opens at like 12 or 1 i was like well shit okay that kind (laughs) of limits me like i don't want to go here and then go even further only to come back i don't know if that makes sense um no it, but, it makes 100 percent sense so 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 far the furthest i did was trenton which is hour 45 uh ish especially with no traffic early on a saturday if there was traffic it probably would have been closer to two hours because it's like halfway to kingston um and yeah that, that, that's for a typical one that's pretty much the longest it's been also I, i've done a few niagara trips because i as i already mentioned that's about an hour and a half drive in itself too but like i'm thinking of um um there's a brewery called block three in saint jacobs that's a good two and a half hours away like that that's gonna take some planning um otherwise like i need like an overnight like like i love kingston I know you being all the way in Montreal, you probably are somewhat familiar with them. Yeah. Um, the um, They got some good beer there. I, I, they, they have a brewery there called Daft Brewing, which I finally discovered last summer, which is phenomenal. Stone City Ales is one of my favorites in the province. And because um, it's three hours away that I kind of need to get a motel room or something for the night, you know, like that, that requires planning. Yeah. Until last summer, I usually would travel to Kingston for a day with a friend. Um, 
the friend would drink more and I would bring more home. That's usually the deal. Uh, my car, my trunk space, I buy everything for myself. Uh, and you know, I would always bring home a couple of growlers, uh, from there. And then it's like, Oh, they're doing cans of bottles now. Perfect. I don't have to sit on a growler for a year (laughs) to bring it back. So, uh, like Kingston Brewing Company, they finally started canning their stuff and, I don't know if that's one of the ones you're referring to. They got some good stuff, but like I'm, I, I agree with you. That's it's a lot more convenient. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like even when I, when I went there, I, I use Google. Uh, I use the Ontario Brewery Map. It's called. Yep. Uh, yep. But Santor wasn't there, and then I am leaving this. I'm on my last brewery on the way out, and somebody's like, "Did you go to Santor?" I'm like, "I didn't even know this place existed." So, I know they're closed. Just, you know that. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Because uh, of COVID or. No, it was before that. Oh, okay, okay. I um, I don't know business wise. I'm not going to pretend I no. can figure out why. <laughs> no, no, that's that's always unfortunate. But yeah, I I would hit Stone City, Kingston, uh, River. I want to say Riverhead. Riverhead, Riverhead. I've yeah. never been, and they, uh, uh, I, I wanted to finally go this summer. But yeah. um, they're they're one of the places that was like, even though it was it wasn't a lockdown, they were still really like tightly like. They were yeah. pretty. I mean, I I can't blame I can't blame a company for wanting to be cautious. Yeah. No, they were no. one of the places that was still really just selling bottles instead of letting you sit in. And I was kind of like, no, if I go to a brewery for the first time, I want to sit in and have a beer. So yeah, I that, it was it was good because the only time I've gone there, it was uh, our meal on the way back before heading heading back to Montreal with a friend, and uh, it was somebody's birthday there. So we're like sitting there, and they're like, "Hey, want cake?" I'm like, "No, but." Thank you. Like that's, that's just pure Canadian right there. Oh, yep. we don't know these people. Let's offer them birthday cakes. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. It's uh it's awesome. And, and, you know, I look forward to the days when we could all be doing this stuff again. Uh, I truly mm-hmm. do. Um, I miss just getting in the car and driving for hours sometimes. So I agree. That's why I still try to do that, but I have to justify just going for bottles and not being able to sit down. But when I, yeah. when I do that, like, like quite frankly, like last weekend I was in Toronto doing it. And um, actually just today before this interview, I went just a little one up, up in Newmarket. And uh, just, I don't know, these, these people still like to just talk, even though you're just buying bottles. Like I, I enjoy talking beer, you know, it's, it's such an easy way to start a conversation with somebody. Uh, it sucks that I, it, 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 there's that awkwardness of like, okay, I bought my beers. I really should go now. I hope they don't mind me saying the talk. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I'm sitting there with the beer, they know I'm not going anywhere, you, you know? Um, but still, I, I, I get that joy. I make it feel a little bit more worth it when the people behind the counter selling you the beer want to actually talk, especially after 11 and a half years myself of working in retail and knowing customer service. I think that's very important, a very important way to get customers back in your store. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, so one of the local guys for Origins, I went there yesterday before our, because we have a curfew in Quebec. Uh, and he's like, oh man, hey, you know, he recognized me because even under the mask, this thing is sticking out. So uh, he's like, oh man, it's been a while since you've been here. I'm like, yeah, you know, I've been honestly ordering beer at home services because I don't like leaving my house that often right now because of COVID. And he's like, no, I totally get it. But uh, as soon as we're open, I'm like, dude, day one, day one, I'm here again. So I'm going to be playing darts or if you bring the pinball to machine back, I'm going to be drinking beer and, and doing that. And that's it. So that's, uh, that's what I'm looking for. To. Yeah. There's a uh, few. Oh, go, go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, it's a quick little thing, but there's a few breweries that I've promised, like, yeah, as soon as you open up again, uh, I'll be there day one. But yeah, <laughs> just today at, at Old Flame, I made that promise to them. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. There's only so many places you could promise the same thing, but it's uh, <laughs> for the for the purposes of this show, you know, uh, I have my select few that it will be first day, uh, but it won't be the one I'm going to thankfully is a quick Uber, but my other two I have to drive. So it's like, okay, I'll go for a beer and then buy beer and then go to the other place. So, cause responsible driving is very, very and adamant about, you know, don't drink and drive, drive responsibly, oh, yeah. drink responsibly. So it's uh, very important. Um, so for, for the site, you mentioned pre-show uh, what's next for, for your Instagram. I don't know. I, I don't have, it's not like I, I don't think of the future like that. You know, I don't really have, Oh, I see what you're referring to. <laughs> you're referring to the top tens. So yes, silly me. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking when when you when you hear the question, I'm thinking long term. That yeah. that top ten starting. Uh, <laughs> long term, I don't really have much of a plan except for I'm getting excited about these top tens that I I'm doing because um, the next one. I mean, 
Isub is going to be posting a couple Fridays. So actually that's going to be the day before I reveal it. Not that anybody really cares about the secret of it, <laughs> but uh, so what I'm going to do is um, cause I'm a big movie buff um, and I love the Oscars. I know it's kind of lame, but I'm, I'm obsessed with the Oscars. I know a lot of Oscar related facts who won what and what the significance of them winning this award is and this and that. Um, so what, I'm going to start it off simple and do my top 10 best picture winning films. Um, I pretty much already have all the beers that I want to match about half of them. I have the pictures. I've had the pictures taken since like November. Um, Cause I, I've, I've been that into this. So I, around when I started doing the Beatles countdown and I started planning out the movie one too. And I don't want these beers to get bad. I, I found them. I'm like, Oh, I want to do that's actually why I went to wild card that I mentioned in Trenton. Uh, where I drove two hours is to get a, a specific beer. Um, so that's that's the next top 10. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of future top 10s. Like I wouldn't mind doing a video game one. I'm debating if I want to just do like top 10 games or concentrate on a specific system. Like we mentioned the Super Nintendo. Like I, there's definitely I can make a top 10 on Super Nintendo. My favorite is the N64. I'm thinking like top 10 N64 games. And then eventually in the future, just do a general top 10. Um, but that's if we're talking future plans, that's the only real plan i have otherwise you know i have no idea how long i'm going to do this for i have no idea i i just i'm just going with the flow i'm not trying to be an influencer or anything like that not that there's well there's nothing wrong with that but some people abuse that term heavily mm-hmm. but i'm not going to get into that i'm not going to get into that because no. i'm trying not to be negative here um but like i'm not trying you know that's not my goal my goal is just my goal is to make friends it's always my goal like in life so I, you can never have too many friends. I've, I've lived by that since about high school, uh, which is a long, long time ago. He's as young as I look. <laughs> um, but um, that's so my future, like, in terms of like long term future, just keep making friends. That's that's been my favorite part of life. And that's, that, that's my favorite part about having this account. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear. And uh, I mentioned this to everybody, you know, when it's safe for, for me to get back to Toronto uh yourself uh edward ed or t dot drinks and um, yeah he's on mommy mommy drinks crafts you know i want us all to, to meet up and drink some good beer together again so that's that's why I, I definitely... you know, growing this show meeting people like yourself it's building to the future of us getting all to hang out again together so i i would like to make sure that happens you mentioned two of my best friends there ed and april so i uh I would definitely like to make sure that happens with them and some other awesome people. But that would be a, that would be a great idea, actually. I'm looking forward to that. Whenever it can happen, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Uh, I mean, this has been great. I have nothing else I need to. Uh, I have nothing else to ask you today. So uh, it's let the people know where they can find you. Just here on Instagram. I mean, um, I mean, everything else is personal accounts. I don't like to just let my personal account out there. I don't care if people find it, but it's just review you fill on instagram that's pretty much all i do <laughs> oh awesome uh, nothing so, else i do is interesting yeah no we're definitely gonna add that in the show notes so people can add you uh through the youtube comments uh as for us at all beer inside everywhere all beer inside.com is the website uh where i'm gonna start releasing the audio of former interviews for those who just listen to podcasts as well uh the store should be up at some point where it'll be just t-shirts mugs things like that uh with our designs on them and as i say at the end of all episodes drink craft not crap. Yes. Awesome. My favorite hashtag. So thank you very much for this today. I really appreciate you taking your time and, and speaking with me.